Good day all. Again, I wish you and all your family are safe. Stay home, stay safe. Coming to the lecture. Before I begin, of course, today I'm going to discuss the most practical aspect, what we call SCORP. I'm not going to go into the intricacies of uh, the formula. We know it's CBV squared by 100 or 2 CBV squared by 100 for a restricted and open waters respectively. I would also ask you, besides giving me the feed, feedback, as I'm uploading these videos on YouTube as well, so please subscribe to my channel on the YouTube by the logo, by the name Marine Quest Solutions. I repeat, kindly subscribe my YouTube channel on Marine Quest Solutions. Thank you in advance. Coming to the subject. Now, this particular thing which I've taken, for example, I'll be coming to it. It is certainly going to be very useful for masters in particular and second mates that is prior to making or prior to planning your passage so over here i've taken the vessel a tanker vessel the block coefficient of course i've taken it at random which is approximately normally this is what it is for medium sized tanker etc 0.78923 this is a figure I've taken to explain you basically to go down the rung with, a, with, a, with this example. Now, the example what I've taken, let's say a vessel of this size has got a static draft of 10 meters. That is when she is at the birth. Prior to planning of the passage, whether it's a palliative waters or open waters. Normally, a speed is decided that what speed, what will be the maximum speed of transit. So, in this case, let's take this speed as 10 knots. I'll take what I've taken over here. Now, we all have on our bridges the squat calculations at various speeds, taking into consideration the maximum CD. So, I've taken Speed of transit is 10, 10 knots and squat is 2 meters. So, when I take 10 meters as a static draft, add up 2 meters to that, that's my dynamic draft. Also, let's not forget, with the squat, there will also be change of trim, which I'm right now not going to discuss, not to interfere with the lecture, which I'll be coming back later with your feedbacks. So, starting with it, a vessel with a static draft of 10 meters, squat allowance 2 meters at 10 knots. The factors which are to be taken into consideration prior to calculation of the squat, and of course I'll be coming to a magical word over here which I'll talk about it later as we proceed. Therefore, the dynamic draft is 12 meters. Now the first effect what I've taken into consideration, of course, they are all taken into account in, you know, in a sequential manner. The effect of sea swell, normally what happens, you take, you check your weather reports. You know that, you know, with the weather report, the sea swell will be approximate 2 meters. So I've taken a round figure of 2 meters. It can be 3 or 4, whatever it is, subjectively, case to case basis. So I've taken the sea swell as 2 meters. Now. There might be kind of a little confusion for people whether 2 meters to be added or to be subtracted. Because the swell, when it comes, it raises the ship. But one thing we should not forget, it also brings the vessel down. And that's where I've gone here just to make us understand. This is the crest and this is the trough. And this is one single wavelength. So when the vessel is sitting on crest, of course, you will have advantage from the datum of 2 meters. That's your amplitude. And when she is going down, you will lose that 2 meters again below the datum. So it is dangerous when you are especially in the shallow water. So please take care on that. Therefore, this 2 meters has to be added up. 
when I added this 2 meters, my draft at that point of time, the dynamic draft becomes 14 meters. The other aspect to take into consideration, the height of tide. Let's say the height of tide is 2 meters. I've taken round figure for easier calculation and easier understanding. The height of tide being 2 meters is subtracted because that is giving us a rise above the sea level. The additional water. So that becomes 12 meters. The other thing what I have taken into account which is change of density. Of course I have written here because the change of density will be having a component of mean sinkage and the change of trim. So I have taken a figure of let's say 1 decimal 2 meters if the vessel is going from a sea water to fresh water. That is high density water to low density water. So we will have mean sinkage plus change of trim. That is what I'm taking here, the mean draft. The mean draft will be 12, 12 plus 1.2 is 13.2 meters. The other aspect is to be taken into account the hog and sack. On big whistles, VLCCs and all that, it can go up to 70, 80 centimeters. But on small ships, let's say it may, about medium-sized tanker, it may go up to 30, 35 centimeters. So I've taken an example of a medium-sized tanker. The same thing is applied to bigger vessels in the same ratio and proportion. So, I've taken the hog and sag is 30 centimeters that accrues to 13 decimal 5 meters. Also take into account that when the vessel is has got a high freeboard, the windage area to what the vessel is getting exposed to, there will be some healing movement and or if during the transit if the vessel develops certain amount of bliss, the negligible. This thing has been taken maximum up to 5 degrees of bliss. I'm not saying, I'm not going to the angle of lol, etc. So, the effect of heel, taking the list negligible up to, up to maximum 5 degrees and the windage area depends upon the superstructure and the size of the vessel as well as the free boat and the intensity of the wind. Which will bring me to Say I have taken again approximately 50 centimeters. The, the case will vary as for your specific uh, your vessel specifically, but this is what I have taken to make you understand the calculations. So the effect of heel and windage area and the weather again in case the swell increases, I have taken all those things into account cohesively. That brings me to 14 meters of dynamic drop. The other thing which we have to take into consideration, the company's UKC policy. In open sea, most of the companies they have a UKC policy of 10% of the dynamic draft. I've come across during my audits inspections, some companies do take this as static draft, but later on they accumulate everything into their UKC policy. But this way I'm going in a you know systematic manner so we don't forget out and forget anything. So when you take dynamic draft into account, then you add up all these factors plus 10% of the company's UKC policy, you get additional safety margin. So let's say the company's UKC policy in this particular case is 10%. 10% of this, the dynamic draft is 1 decimal 2. That brings me to 15 decimal 2 meters. Now gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the magical figure which we shall, shall not forget. And that's what is talked about or called the minimum controlling depth. The minimum controlling depth in this case is coming to 15 decimal 2 meters. So, coming to the nearest contour on the egg disk, your safety depth. Let's say 16, 20, 80 meters, I'll go for it. And if we follow this example, what will happen, especially for second mates in consultation with the master, he knows if he calculates this on his squat form, which is, which is in the SMS forms, if he calculates this before planning the passage, you get to know this magical figure of minimum controlling depth. Therefore, you know, when your speed of transit is going to be 10 knots in a palletage waters or any restricted waters, your minimum controlling depth at that point of time will be 15 decimal 2 meters in this particular case 
rounded off to the nearest contour. What all I have discussed, in case anyone has any questions, he can ask me any point of time, send me a message. Ask me the question on my YouTube channel or my Facebook under the same name Marine Quest Solutions. I'll be uh, stepping up this lecture gradually in order to make sure that you know I'm not also forgetting any aspect which is to be discussed or taking into consideration to bring up the youngsters, groom them into the system because see what happens that this is the time when the senior officers they should groom their junior officers to bring them to kind of a competitive world as far as the industrial practices are there. The other thing what I've drawn here is overtaking situation. As per rule number 13, I'll read out for you. I'm not going to start with the ROR which I'll take it in a separate lecture. I'll read out the rule here, rule number 13, which says, notwithstanding, notwithstanding anything contained in the rules of part B, section 1 and 2, any vessel overtaking any other, any other, other vessel shall keep out of the way of the vessel being overtaken. A vessel shall be deemed to be overtaking when coming up with another vessel from a direction more than 22.5 degrees above the beam that is in such a position with reference to the vessel she is overtaking that at night she should be able to see only stern lights of the vessel but neither of her side lights. Any subsequent alteration of bearing between the two vessels shall not make the overtaking vessel a crossing vessel when a vessel within the meaning of these rules or relieve her of the duty of keeping her clear of the overtaking vessel until such time she is finally fast and clear. Now here I'll just describe a little bit on the, this uh, the para number D. See there have been a misconception by young seafarers that if a vessel she is overtaking another vessel and thereafter she goes and she has got a course to alter to her port side. Now this vessel may think now she is a crossing vessel and therefore she is a stand on vessel and this is the giveaway vessel. No. This part of the rule is a bit tricky. So what the rule says if the vessel is overtaking another vessel she shall it is her responsibility of the vessel which is overtaking another vessel until such time she is finally passed and clear of the vessel being overtaken. So in past, as for the marine accidents, there have been lots of accidents as far as the rule number 13 is concerned. Rule number 13 is concerned. Focus on this, just make sure. As, as far as rule number 13 is concerned. So, I've made a pictorial chart of five, you know, situations in an overtaking situation, you know, when the overtaking situation takes place. That goes back to my first lecture when I explain, explain you all that why the bow waves are positive and the stern waves are negative. Use the same concept and we'll be able to understand this much better. As I explained in my first lecture, the bow waves are the, of course, they are construed as positive, what we have read and what we have understood and stern waves are negative, which is correct. But why it is so, that's what I tried to explain because when the vessel is making a headway, the water is, she's cutting through the water and because of her underwater volume of displacement as and how she's moving, a void is created and the water starts receding into this void to fill up the void and then pass it through the stern. Now, here I've taken two vessels of different sizes, this being bigger one, this being smaller one. Let's say this vessel is going at uh, you know 12 or 30, say 30 knot speed and this vessel is coming up at 15 knots to overtake her, the small vessel. So see what happens, once she reaches just close to her stern, of course,
the water is receding here same time the water is trying to fill up here but the underwater volume of the displacement of this vessel being bigger she is trying to pull her together towards her which can also be seen in positive negative forces because the water which is filling up the big vessel void is bigger because of the bigger underwater volume of displacement and that vessel because the water is first going to fill up the biggest bigger void till such time the gradient between this and this is equal she will experience a tendency of yawing or getting you know attracted or caught towards this vessel's stern till such time the gradient is equal now let's not forget it that this is happening continuously with a blink of an eye so this angle theta which i have shown here in black and then thereafter in green uh, color for you to understand it better this theta of deflection will vary on the difference in the underwater volume of the displacement between two vessels a bigger vessel as i say being bigger underwater volume of displacement bigger size will draw more water towards her or will the the void will be bigger for water to fill up this thing now make no mistake that this i have shown you in an open water when the overtaking is take place, taking place at a closer range what would happen if the same situation is there in a confined water the quantum will vary one is because of ukc number two because of the restricted water i will come back to that also in a different lecture which will be a bigger lecture so coming to this this vessel with a bigger underwater water volume of displacement is moving with 30 knots and this is the one which is with 50 knots which is overtaking vessel you see these blue lines what i've drawn here blue lines you just consider this as a pipe when the water is flowing here here the area is open let's say the mouth of the pipe is bigger here it is smaller so what happened there's a constriction here the volume of water which is passing is same here the pressure is less here the pressure increases and the water passes faster but it is at the same time giving it a cushioning effect because of the cushioning effect this vessel will have a kind of a tendency to wobble this way and get attracted at the same time the cushioning effect of the water which is passing through it at a high pressure rate is trying to push her away also and this is happening so frequently if you are on autopilot you will find that the gyro is you know hunting you 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 feel the gyro starts to hunt and that is your first indication that probably you are coming into the range of a bigger vessel and getting drawn towards her because of the water underwater volume of displacement being larger of the other big vessel the one which you are trying to overtaking overtake that means if you are on an overtaking vessel So, case number two, she is drawn a little forward. Again, same thing. Now, you see here, the water is trying to fill up this area first because of positive pressure, and till such time the water fills up here in this void, this vessel will start having a horrendous amount of time. Again, I repeat myself because of bigger underwater volume of displacement. If, if, if the vessel has got a, now, also it makes a difference. This is doing 30 knots and this is doing 50 knots. The speed also matters. If we make it conversely speaking, the bigger vessel, let's say, is overtaking a smaller vessel, the cases might be entirely different. The smaller vessel will get attracted towards a bigger vessel very fast because of the higher speed. More the speed, more the water will take time to fill up the void. And in that kind of situation, it will be catastrophic for a small vessel. In other words, even though if you are on a bigger vessel, you are overtaking a smaller vessel, don't think that you will pass through. Because of your higher speed, the water gushing into your big vessel's underwater volume of displacement also takes some time. In the meantime, the vessel, the smaller vessel will, will get drawn towards you and the, mostly the accident takes place if this is the bigger vessel and this is the smaller vessel which is being overtaken and you are overtaking this one what happens once she comes here because here your 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 transom is bigger 
starting from the bow till midship that this area is bigger so the underwater volume of displacement here is bigger that's where this at this point of time you the small vessel will get drawn towards you and she may come and hit you somewhere here. in other case in, in this particular case the opposite may take place so coming to case number one two three three is now they are almost let's say abeam to each other here again the water is coming here filling up here but receding at both the sides so then the negative which is shown here also a void negative is created so this vessel now as i've shown in the black with the theta over here will have a more tendency to get drawn towards you and a bigger vessel will also be falling towards her and same thing goes by goes over here so this theta the theta can be anything depending upon the speed of the vessel which you are overtaking or the speed of the vessel which is being overtaken higher the speed more the yaw so best thing is if you are overtaking a vessel another vessel at higher speed maintain distance depending upon your vessel's parameters your vessel speed and your vessel's maneuvering characteristics. So, coming to this point, as I have depicted over here, just remember the mantra that water is filling up here, void is bigger, void is bigger, it's going to fill up here, till such time the void, the gradient between this vessel and this vessel is equalized, the gradient is steep enough between this and this ship. Automatically, this ship will get attracted towards the bigger one. So, now I will stop here, but before that I am still waiting for the question what I have asked you all guys. I repeat myself on a double hull ship, whether it's a tank, VLCC, small tanker, big tanker, whatever it is, you will, see, you will find one side of the tank is bigger. I would like to ask you Try to find out, if not, I'm here because I'm the one who initiated this question. The reason I'm asking you or reason I'm not trying to tell you the, each and everything serving on the platter is I want to see an interactive discussion. I also want to know, are you guys interested? If I'm trying to spend my time to share my legacy to you all guys. So please come back to me with your comments, with your remarks, negative, positive, critics. I don't mind. But do come back. And again, before I call off this lecture, please do visit my Facebook page, Marine Quest Solution. Same thing as on my Facebook. I will be uploading all these lectures on daily basis every day. And I would humbly request you all guys' feedback. Thank you very much. Good day. Stay safe. Stay at home.